Hi guys, it's Jordan from BNP Campers. I'm just going to be doing a handover video on this Auto Trail Chieftain. Um, it's based on the 180 horsepower, 3 litre chassis. Um, and what I'll do is I'll walk around the outside. I'll show you around the bonnet first, but I'll walk around the outside and then we'll go inside after that. So under the bonnet, um, they give you all of your sort of consumable bits and pieces over here on the left hand side, which is quite nice and easy. Uh, so you've got your washer fluid, power steering fluid, engine coolant, brake fluid, and your engine oil. Uh, your engine oil dipstick is this red topped one just down here. And so that's all of your consumable items over here on the left hand side. Um, on the front here, we've got some air conditioning information. Uh, whichever one is clipped out, which is this one here. So it's 0 0.550. Uh, we've got 691, which is the bluey color here. So if you needed, needed any sort of touch up paints or anything like that, this blue color here is Fiat 691. Uh, the actual weight of the vehicle is five ton. The original chassis plate is this one just here, but it has been uprated with an Alco chassis, so you have got a five ton uh, maximum weight. Other thing to mention on these cabs is that you've got the air filter inside this box just here. And because the engine battery sits under the floor in the cab, which I'll just point out to you, the engine battery sits underneath this little plastic cover here. So because of that, if you uh, need a jump starting, you have got a positive terminal for the engine battery just here. And your earthing point is this one just here. So it just basically means you haven't got to go, you know, take out the whole floor in the cab just to jump start the vehicle. Right, so inside the passenger door, we've got your bonnet release handle just there. Um, both front seats are swivel seats and you just use those little handles there to swivel the seats around. You've got your um, jack and wheel brace kit underneath the passenger seat, fire extinguisher just there and your LPG locker handle. So if you want to open up this, this gas locker here, you have to open up the passenger door and pull on this little lever here and that will release the uh, uh, gas locker. Um, you've also got tyre pressures just here uh, and the diesel filling point just here behind the passenger door as well. So um, what I'll do now is I'll just carry on and just do literally every locker we get to uh, and just explain to you what we've got inside. So um, this gas locker here we've got space for two six kilos definitely um you may or may not be able to fit 13s in there actually by looking at that uh you probably can you can definitely fit one in there but uh might be a bit tight to get two 13s in but we tend to just use these six kilos to be honest so to turn the gas on we go anti-clockwise around to the left on the valve and then clockwise all the way down around to the right we'll turn the bottle off uh the only other thing to mention on this one is, is that you've got a little crash sensor here on your regulator uh, so the little green button basically is your crash sensor so if the regulator thinks that you've been in a crash it should isolate the gas coming from here and into the vehicle so sometimes it gets itself a little bit confused and it thinks that you've been in a crash when you haven't so if you find that you turn the gas on at the bottle and you know that you've got gas in the bottle itself and nothing's coming through press and hold on this for three seconds and then you should have gas coming through to the inside of the van. Make sure that you turn your gas off before you start driving. Um, and uh, you know, that's about all you need to know really about that. Nice and straightforward. Storage underneath this uh, side settee in here, nothing to actually point, point out to be honest, it's uh, all pretty self-explanatory. The um, Electronic step comes out with the little black button just there. So if I press that button there, step comes in and out really nicely. Uh, and other than that, I will run you through the inside when we get to it. Uh, bin on the door just here and a blackout bind 
on the door there as well. These two vents just here are both to do with the fridge. So if you have the fridge lit up on gas, you should be able to hear a little bit of a flame down here at the bottom. Uh, but basically it just gives you really good access to the back of the fridge. Um, obviously it's more, more so for our sort of purposes, you know, we're gonna be getting in there and doing servicing and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, that's to the back of the fridge. Then got the uh, external gas point. So uh, the idea behind the gas point being here is that you've got the wind out awning up here over the door, awning light. And so this is going to be where you're going to want to have your barbecue, basically. Um, so as long as you've got your gas turned on in the locker, you should have gas coming through this bullfinch fitting. Um, so yeah, awning wound out, barbecue out here. It's kind of the idea behind that. Toilet cassette. So this is our toilet cassette locker. This is a Thetford toilet cassette, so it's a new style. Uh, and to take it out, super easy. Literally all you need to do is lift up on the little yellow uh, orange tab here and pull the entire thing towards you. Uh, once you've got it to that point there, you'll be able to take it all the way out. All you need to know from there, to be honest, is that you twist this around and empty it from here. Uh, whilst you're emptying it out, you should be holding down this little orange button at the back. And when it's completely emptied out and you want to put it back in again, all you need to do is fill this cap up with blue fluid, pour it back inside, and then give it a little swish about before you push it back in. Pushing it back in is literally just push all the way forwards until this little yellow, oh, sorry, I don't know why I keep saying yellow, this little orange handle clips over here. Um, you've got a fresh water flush on here as well, so you haven't got any separate flush fluids to worry about above it. Um, so essentially, as long as you've got a little bit of water in your fresh tank, you'll be able to flush the toilet wherever you are. This little bit here is your boiler vent. So if you've got the boiler lit up on gas, which I do at the moment, you will be able to feel hot air coming out through either side of the top of this vent. Um, so it's just a good sort of fail safe way of knowing that it's definitely working or not. Um, there is a cover for that. So like a winter cover, which is this thing here. So you need to make sure that this is off before you start trying to light the boiler up. Um, mainly because it just won't work uh, with it. But if you imagine that boiler is going to try and light up, so it's going to pump gas through. And because it's not got any oxygen coming into it from the outside with this cover on, it won't light up. But if it does catch, it's going to be a bit of a bang. So just make sure that you take that cover off before you start trying to do anything with the boiler. Uh, and once you've taken it off, you can forget about it and, uh, and do what you like. Uh, still on the point of the boiler, uh, first of all, this is your water pump just whilst we're here. Um, but the boiler itself has got this little orange... <laughs> I've just said orange instead of yellow now as well. Uh, right, so this little yellow handle here, this is your boiler drain off valve. So if you wanted to drain the boiler out of all of its water, which is about 10 litres, uh, you would literally lift that little handle up uh, and, and it would start draining out all the water from the boiler. Now the only reason you would do that is... Re well, pretty much the only reason that you would do that uh, is if it was coming up to winter and you wanted to winterize the vehicle, you would lift that up, drain all the water out of the boiler, do the same for your fresh and waste water tanks as well. Uh, but yeah, it's just a good, a good way to stop any water from freezing up inside these pipes uh, and obviously the boiler itself as well. So that's your boiler drain off point there. Obviously you've got the good size garage. Uh, you can easily fit sort of bikes and things like that in here. You have got these little rails here on the floor, which would have been factory fitted uh, if you wanted to fit, you know, some sort of chains or something to hold things up. So at the very back of the vehicle, we've got the uh, full size ladder, which folds down and allows you access to the roof. Uh, the spare wheel on these auto trails sit inside this little cover just here, which is quite nice. Uh, so what you need to do is take off this little front panel and then it'll have a big twisting sort of nut that you can take out. Of course, we've got the tow bar at the bottom as well. Uh, so if you do need to tow something, tow car or whatever like that, you've got the tow bar just there and reversing camera in this little screen at the top. So onto the off side. Um, the off side is more about uh, water and uh, your ledger battery which is just down there but essentially this entire side is all just to do with water so we've got the fresh water filling point just here so 
you will need your key to go into that to unlock it but this is where you fill up your fresh water down below that we've got your fresh water drain off point so you will have to hold on to the back of it so you can't really do it with one hand um, but if you want to drain out your fresh water tank you do it from that valve just there uh, so it's a blue valve and that's normally the way blue is normally fresh and gray is waste Next thing we come to is this, which is your external water point. So you've got an external hot and cold water point, which is literally just this little plugging in piece here. Uh, so you plug that into that, twist it wherever you want to go. So you've got cold or hot, uh, and then you'll basically just have access to using this little shower point here. So that's your external hot and cold water. Another ball pinch fitting, just like the uh, external gas point on the other side. Um, in this massive external locker just here, uh, you've got your leisure battery just down here and you've got your wastewater drain off point. So uh, anytime you want to drain out the wastewater, you literally just open it up so it's in the position that it is now. Uh, and if you want to close it off, twist it around like that and the little valve comes across and closes it over. We've also got the electric hookup point in here. So if you do have access to a hookup cable, plug it in just there and that will essentially allow you to use any mains sockets or uh, appliances inside the vehicle and it means that your battery charger comes to life and starts charging up this leisure battery straight away as well. So in the cab, um, we've got a pretty high spec in the cab itself. Uh, we've got just shy of 30,000 miles on the clock, which, as you can imagine, for the age of the vehicle is absolutely brilliant. Um, so we've got the cruise control uh, from this little stalk just here below the indicators and lights. Washers and wipers over on the right hand side. Electric adjusting mirrors and windows. You can also lock and unlock the cab from these little two buttons here. You've got the six speed manual gearbox. Uh, reverse is lift up on the back, over and up to the top left. Uh, you've then got the, again, you've got the lock and unlock buttons just there, hazard warning lights and your fog lamp. You've then got your air conditioning switch just here and all of your heater controls either side of that. You've got a nice doubled in size head unit just there which does work really nicely, to be fair. And a hands-free Alpine thing there. You don't have to use that if you don't want to. It's obviously just something the previous owner uh, has fitted. Um, but there you go, that's all there. So that is about it for the cab, really. So I'm just going to spin around now and jump into the back. So you can probably see how the layout would work out. You would obviously turn those front seats around. Uh, you'll have a standalone table to sit in here as well. But you've got some of the biggest uh, settees that I've ever seen in a motorhome here, uh, which literally, if you want to make into a bed, you can pull together to the middle and make an absolutely massive double bed here. Uh, you can also use these as singles if you want to. You can just use them as singles. Uh, it's totally up to you how you would like to use it. But there you go. Uh, so, first of all, up here over the cab, we've got a nice big storage locker, as you can see, plastic lined, so if you did want to put something that's, you know, maybe wet or something in there, you, I suppose you could. Um, and actually what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to show you through the control panel first, because that sort of makes the most sense, I think, um, and then I'll go around and show you some of the appliances and stuff like that. So um, the control panel is just here above the habitation door. So the first thing you need to do is press the power button and that'll then just sort of spring the whole thing to life. Um, once you've pressed the power button, let me just get back to the home screen. Right, once you've pressed the power button, you will then be able to use these buttons over here. So if I just scroll through here, it's just showing us uh, the time. Uh, this is showing us our leisure battery voltage, how many amps it's drawing, solar power, uh, and oh, that's the, that's the amps just there. Sorry, this is your capacity. Vehicle battery voltage, leisure battery voltage, freshwater level, and wastewater level. 
and then back to the home screen. So this is essentially, uh, scrolling through there is essentially just gonna be showing you all of your levels, um, just allowing you to keep on top of what, what's going on in the vehicle itself. So where the leisure battery is at the moment, it's on about 11 and a half volts. Now 11 and a half volts isn't gonna cause any problems at all. It's, it's an absolutely normal battery rate, especially when we've got lights on, the water pumps on uh, and all that sort of stuff. Um, but it may or may not be worth starting the van up for a little while or plugging the hookup cable in for a little bit. Uh, when you start the van up or plug the hookup cable in, you're gonna be sat at 14 volts. Um, so whenever there's a charge going into it, you're going to be around 14 volts. So, you know, it, it's just a difference. If, if you wanted to go away in the vehicle, uh, for, you know, for, for a couple of weeks or something like that, or however long, I would just always recommend, it doesn't matter what vehicle you've got. I always recommend hooking it up for a little while, ideally, uh, the day before, or if you're going to be driving it to go to where you go, if you're going to go for a good few hours or so, running and driving the engine also charges up the leisure battery so uh you know that'll give it a good chance to charge up anyway so completely up to you how you want to do it but i would always recommend getting some kind of charge into the leisure battery before you head off or at least before you get to where you're going um so on the control panel itself you've then got awning light so we can turn that button on there for awning light uh this one here uh which one was that again that is your lower lights okay so these little under covered lights here are from this switch just here um the next button that we've got there let me just zoom in a little bit sorry sorry about my shaky hand uh this little button just here uh this is your battery selector button now at the moment we've got the leisure battery selected which is how we want it to be basically um when we've got the leisure battery selected it means that the leisure battery is the battery that's powering all the lights and everything in the back end of the vehicle. So um, if I selected vehicle battery, so if I switched over now to vehicle battery, which I now have, all of the power in the back end of the vehicle, so all of your lights and all of your pump and whatever's 12 volt is now being fed from the engine battery. Now that's okay if you're in a bit of a, you know, if you desperately need some 12 volt power, uh, but if you imagine, if I leave these lights on for a good few hours now, the, the vehicle battery is just going to go down and down and down and down and down. And then eventually we won't be able to start the van up. So the only time that you would want to use this button here and select vehicle battery instead of leisure is if you wanted to charge the vehicle battery up via your electric hookup. So when you're hooked up on the mains, whichever battery you've got selected up there, is the one that's being charged as well as the battery that's powering everything in the back end of the vehicle. So if you're hooked up on the mains, you can select which battery is being charged by pressing the button just there. So if you see what happens when I press the button there, it now comes up vehicle battery. So that's our selected battery. If I press it again, it comes up leisure battery. Okay, so essentially the majority of the time we're going to want to leave it on leisure. The last switch just here is our tank heater button. So if it is coming up to winter and you want to leave a tank heater on, you can put that on just there. It'll just essentially stop the fresh water tank from, from freezing up. Um, but there you go. So that is our control panel. Straightforward, uh, easy to use. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to show you through this over here, which is our power supply unit. So power supply unit as you can probably imagine self-explanatory uh, is where all the power for the vehicle goes into this so all the 12 volt power mains power all goes into here and then it all just kind of gets separated and sent off to where it needs to go to from here um, now these sergeant power supply units are my absolute favorites because you get this entire thing just here so essentially what this uh, little thing here is telling us is what all of these things do. So if, for example, let's just say I came into the vehicle just a minute ago and I wanted to put the, all the lights on, uh, but I turned the light switch on and I couldn't get any lights to come on. I would come over here to this unit and have a little look through this 12 volt uh, fuses section and I'll see lighting circuit one, lighting circuit two. So you can see there, it should be a red fuse it should be 10 amps and we're looking at number 10 and 11. So I can open this little cover up, 10 and 11. 
and I will just essentially check these two fuses. So it really is as easy as that. If you have any problems with any thing in the vehicle, you can come here and have a little look through here and it will physically tell you where to look for it. Now, obviously we can do any of that. If you do have any problems with anything, just come back to us. Uh, but you know, if you're away on a holiday, you don't want to have to stop your holiday and come back to us. If you can just have a little look in here uh, and quickly find the uh, the culprit of the issue, uh, then obviously you're going to be much happier and be able to carry on your holiday. So that's the idea behind these units. They're so straightforward that you know, literally anybody can have a little look, uh, look on this little sheet here, see what they do. Um, I always recommend as well just carry around a little bag of um, these little blade fuses. Um, if you can get a bag of sort of five, tens, twenties and thirties, uh, then, you know, it, there's not really much you can't replace. Um, the other part of this is the section at the top just here. So this is your mains uh, trip switches, which is this part over here. So if you have your electric hookup plugged in and you notice that something's not working on the mains, so let's just say uh, none of your 240 volt plug sockets are working when the mains cable is plugged in, you can have a little look over here and just see. So we've got sockets on MTB number two. Sorry, I'm not seeing that. Sockets on MTB number two. And you can have a little look in here and just see MTB number two is upright, so that's good. Uh, the other thing that you've got on this power supply unit is you've got a couple of switches at the top. Now these basically, you don't have to do anything with these. These correlate with the control panel. So if I turn the water pump switch off on the panel, it should be off over here. Vice versa, if I put it on there, it comes on on the control panel. So they work in correlation with each other uh, and essentially, you know, you don't have to do anything with these. This is all just telling you what the control panel's doing. Um, over on the right hand side though, this is a little bit more important. If you um, wanted to isolate or needed to isolate any of the mains things, basically, for lack of a better word, um, if you wanted to isolate the battery charger, you press that little green button there and it'll pop itself out. And essentially that then isolates it from the mains power. Uh, space heater and water heater, same goes for those. So you can isolate all the uh, 240 volt appliances from there. I will just point out as well, um, you got the, this is your TV aerial booster, basically. So you've got a little switch up here and turns this thing on and off. So you haven't got to have that on all the time, but this is your TV aerial booster. That's so if you if you turn that power on there, it should boost the signal uh, and then wherever your, uh, just having a look for it now. I'm, oh, I'm guessing it's probably gonna be wired up to this actually, your entertainment system. Uh, but you will need to have that on in order to get any signal. Also, just on that note, entertainment system switch just here. If I turn that on, it will then give you power going to this unit up here. All right, so that's a factory fitted thing from Auto Trail. They've pretty much always done that. So um, that's the control panel and power supply unit. So that's essentially your, you know, the brain of the vehicle there. Um, and this is, you know, the, the, the power supply unit is kind of like where just, just where everything goes to that and then gets diverted. So um, important to look after that. Don't put anything, if, I, if I'm honest with you, because uh, I have seen it before where people are trying to fill these lockers up and all that sort of stuff. I just just don't because uh, <laughs> it's, it's not worth it. These things do get hot. Your battery charger is inside this unit as well. So this will get a little bit warm. Uh, it's just best to leave this entire thing closed up and just leave it to breathe. Um, you don't want it to overheat. So... Um, Appliances is going to be next. Uh, so up here on this little fascia above the door, we've got a couple of things. Um, so on the left hand side here, we've got Ultra Store and we've got 50 to 70. So you've essentially got the, the Ultra Store is the name of your boiler, basically. So if you wanted to get the water hot on the gas, which is what this little dial is up here, you would select 50 or 70 degrees and 
as long as you've made sure that the water is, you know, you've actually got water in the boiler itself, which I'll show you how to do in a minute, you can use this dial here. So 50 or 70, and after about half an hour to an hour, you'll have hot water coming through to your taps. Next door to that, Ultra Heat is the name of your um, space heater down here. Uh, and essentially, if you wanted to use the space heater on the mains, you can select 500, 1000 or 2000 watts. Um, now, I would never recommend using 2000. Um, I think it's far too powerful and it also uses about 8 amps of power. So if you went to a campsite, you'd normally have the option of uh, like a 6, a 10 or a 13 amp pole uh, that you're plugged into. So that essentially means that you've got any one of those, whichever one of those you're plugged into, that's the amount of amps that you've got that you can use inside your vehicle. So let's just say uh, you've got a 10 amp pole. As soon as you plug in, you're going to be drawing between about half an amp and an amp for the battery charger. So that's one. If you use the uh, space heater on 2000, that's eight. So you're then on nine. And then essentially, if you use anything else on the mains, you know, if you try to use this electric ring here, you're going to go over your maximum straight away. Um, so I would always recommend using it either on 500 or 1000. Uh, or to be honest with you, if you've got the gas in the in, in the bottle there, I would just use it on gas, which I'll show you how to do in a minute. But it's yeah, but there you go. I just wouldn't recommend using 2000. It just uses too much power for wherever you are. Uh, so that is how you use the mains on the space heater. Gas on the boiler, mains on the space heater. I'll turn this off for now because I don't really need any hot water in the boiler anyway. Um, so, um, as I was saying about the boiler, if you want to use the boiler and you want to get the water hot inside of it, you do have to make sure of one thing, which is just to make sure that the boiler is actually full. Uh, so the only way to do that, two things, in the gas, in the, sorry, not in the gas locker, in the garage at the back, where I showed you where that little yellow tab is, first of all, just double check that that's definitely still laying down flat and it's not upright. Once you've done that, come into the vehicle, make sure that you've got a little bit of fresh water in your tank by going through the, um, the gauges there. Uh, turn on your water pump and then essentially just come here to the tap. So all you need to do from there, it's the way I do it, turn it to cold, which is round to the right, and draw some water through. So we've got no air coughing out at us, we've got good pressure. So we've got good pressure in the cold side, that's perfect. Now turn it around to the hot. Same goes for that, just make sure there's no coughing and spluttering and air coming out of this. That's perfect. And now I'll turn the tap off. Okay, so what I was just listening for, which happened straight away, was I was just listening to make sure that the pump turned itself off when I turned the uh, water off. So once I turn this tap off, the pump turned itself straight off. And what that means is that it's got up to a certain amount of pressure and then turn itself off. So the inline pump that you've got in here, which I showed you in the garage, will not turn itself off unless it gets to a certain pressure. So what that means is that if you've got any leaks or any serious problems with the water system, that pump will not turn itself off. So if it does, it means that you're absolutely perfect. You're all good. So that is it. That's the process behind just making sure the boiler's full and also making sure that you haven't got any leaks. If that pump turned, if you turn the pump on, and they just ran on and ran on and ran on, you would probably have either not enough water in the tank, uh, which is why I said to check that you've got water in the tank, or you've got a leak somewhere, because if it can't quite get to that pressure because there's a leak somewhere, it won't turn itself off. So um, we've then got the cooker. So we've got three burner hob, grill and oven. Uh, up here on the burners, we have also got the mains um, electric ring as well. So the electric ring, as you can imagine, will only work when the electric hookup is plugged in. And that is from this little dial just here. You've got one through to six. And I think they normally have a maximum of about five or six amps. So again, uh, just be sort of semi-cautious. If you're going to be using this on maximum power, just bear in mind that you're going to be drawing a fair amount of power from this and to just be cautious of what else you've got on 
inside the vehicle. And the only reason I say that, I mean, it's not the end of the world if you trip the pole outside that you're plugged into. It's not going to cause any problems, but it won't trip the uh, the mains power socket inside here uh, because there's no actual physical issues inside the vehicle. If you plugged a dodgy socket, a, a dodgy plug into this socket, then it would trip this RCD. But if you just overload the power that you're plugged into outside, it will trip the pole that you're plugged into outside. So you don't want to have to go outside, you know, in the middle of the night and turn your, your power back on. So, um, yeah, sorry, I went off a bit of a tangent there. So you've got the ignition switches here and your valve for all the burners. So the ignition switch does, does the ignition for the grill and the oven as well. And underneath here, we've got main socket. That is for the uh, electric ring on the top. And that's it. Okay. Okie doke. So, um, next thing I'm going to run through is going to be the fridge. Um, I think... Yeah. So the fridge itself, this is a Dometic three-way fridge. Um, what I mean by three-way, as you can probably imagine, is that it works three separate ways. So you can use it on mains electric, gas, or 12 volt. So they're the three energies that will get this fridge cold. Now the 12 volt is for when your engine's running only. So this is for keeping the fridge cold whilst you're driving. And it's not quite powerful enough to get the fridge cold by itself. It's the same with every single boat home fridge, uh, I say it on every video. So you have to make sure that you get the fridge cold before you leave, either on the mains or the gas, and then switch over to 12 volt just for whilst you're driving. Now on this particular one, you have also got the AES function, which is automatic energy selector. and when you've got that on, it should essentially choose one of these three energies for you. So whichever energy it thinks is correct, it will select for you. So it has done the right thing here. Essentially, the, the way it works is it will try and do in this order. So, so let's just say if I had the electric hookup plugged in and I press the A button here, it will try the hookup first and it will obviously work. So it will choose hookup and it will stay on hookup. Because I haven't got the hookup plugged in, it tried hookup, realised I didn't have any power plugged in, so then it tried gas. It then realised I did have the gas on, so it used gas. So if I didn't have the electric hookup plugged in, I've turned the gas off because you, because you should turn the gas off before you start driving. It will try both of those, and then as soon as you start the engine up, it will select 12 volt. So basically what I'm trying to say is if you have it on auto here, if you have this little A button illuminated, it should, this is just telling us that the fridge door is open, by the way, um, it should technically select the correct energy for you anyway. If you want to do it manually, all you have to do is just press the button yourself and it will select it manually. All right, so that's all you have to do. Um, you've then got temperature selector, just here and that's just going to be giving you a little bit of light I think that's your light um, gauge so you can adjust the amount of light that you've got in there um, so yeah there you go nice and straightforward on that one obviously you've got the freezer compartment at the top just here and your main fridge section down below so, um, good size fridge. You've got the main um, wardrobe area here. Uh, so you've got the uh, light inside here, which comes on and off with this here. So when you shut the door, it should turn itself off. Um, this brown folder is where all of your paperwork is going to be. So if you wanted to have a little look through that and just see all the paperwork for all the appliances and stuff like that, it should be inside there. Below that, we've got the um, space heater. So these space heaters are really simple to use. If you want to use it on uh, 
the gas. Uh, I mean, over here on the left-hand side, this is all to do with your fan. So because it's a blown air space heater, it means that you, you'll have these little circular vents around the vehicle. Uh, so if you're using the, the heater either on the gas or on the mains, that which I showed you the switch up there for, you can use the, uh, the fan. So to use the fan, you've also got an auto function on here as well. So you can select A, and it should essentially just automatically start putting out a certain amount of air. Um, if you want to use manual, go down to the M, and then you can just sort of select your speed manually like so. All right, so you don't have to use that if you don't want to, but I would always recommend using the, uh, the, the fan function on it. It just stops the actual heater itself getting too hot and sort of overheating. So uh, to light it up on the gas, first of all, you've got a little peep hole just here. This is really important. So the actual peep hole itself, obviously you're not going to be able to see anything right now because I haven't got it lit up yet, but that is where you want to have a little look to, just to double check that you've definitely got the flame lit up. So to light the flame up, all we're going to do is turn the valve just here. We're not going to push it down just yet, but straight away you can hear, probably won't be able to see it, but the ignition has started inside the heater. So now all I'm going to do is push down when I get to about one. So if we watch what happens, there you go, just about to see that now. The flame has lit straight up. So now all the time that I'm holding this down and it's lit, that is our pilot flame. So it's a little bit orange there. It's not being used for a little while. That's absolutely normal. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift this up and twist it round to about three or four. So lifting it up. And if you watch what happens when I turn it around, main flame kicks straight in. And now it's just trying to stay lit because it's a bit cold, really. So what I'm going to do now, because that's sort of going out, I'm now going to push back down again to get that nice, clean uh, pilot flame to come back on. And the reason that I'm going to do that is because if the flame's kind of showing me that it's not quite lit, lighting up just yet, it just, all it means is it's not quite warm enough to stay on. So pushing down and holding down on this little pilot flame here, just allowing that thermocouple to warm up a little bit. So I'm going to let go of it again now. Just see if that's any better. See the ignition just sort of cutting in and out just to get it to stay on. And there we go. So that now is our pilot flame and main flame both on. And so as long as the flame is on and running like that and you're not pushing down on this little valve, you're good to go. All right. And also the thing is, the more you use this heater, the less orange that flame will be. Uh, the orange just means there's a little bit of carbon in the way. Um, but, you know, after a couple of uses, that'll be a nice blue flame. So to turn this back off again, we're literally going to just gonna turn this all the way back around to zero. Like so. And we've got no flame inside there anymore. So that is the space heater. So towards the back of the van, um, we've got the mains powered, obviously mains powered, uh, microwave up here to Daewoo, as you can see. I think these are factory fitted on these ones. Don't hold me to that, but I'm pretty certain they are. Um, so towards the back, we have got the absolutely massive transverse fixed bed. Uh, so standalone table sits inside this little area here as well so i'll just show you here you've got a separate shower on the right hand side and the actual bathroom here on the left but if i just show you here when we open up this door it will close completely up here and separate the back from the front so if you do have people sleeping in the front you can separate that from here you've then also got the curtain that comes across here so if anyone wanted to use the bathroom from the front you can use it separately from the back end sleeping area so you won't be able to see you know what everyone's doing if you like um so in the bathroom itself uh, i very rarely run through much in the bathrooms because they're literally just self-explanatory um 
normally the only part that I actually run through is the toilet here. So if I just show you how this works, you've got a blue button at the back just here, which will put your flush fluid around. Like so. And when you want to drain it out into the cassette, we push this to the right. That then opens up this little flap here and then pull it back. And that is how you use the flush, drain it into the cassette and then close the drain again. Really is as easy as that. Not much to it at all. Uh, when you need to actually drain out the, uh, the tank, it will come up with a little symbol here telling you that it's full uh, as well. So that's just something you get on these newer cassettes. A little bit of storage up there. Uh, and I would imagine that behind this little cover here is going to be either 12 volt power for the uh, external light or it will be an awning bracket. Just FYI. Uh, right, so I don't think there's much else to run through. You have obviously got the uh, TV bracket up there with uh, aerial socket and 12 volt and 240 volt socket there as well so if you wanted to have a tv in the back just here you can do nice and easily from there um, shower as i said is completely separate so that's really nice um, but again it's just literally a hot and cold tap left and right super easy you don't need to you know hear me tell you how to use that um I see if there's anything else I've missed out. So apologies, it's been a bit of a long video, but there's there's been quite a lot to run through. Oh, sorry, one more thing. Um, just talking about how long the video has been and then one more thing to run through. Um, just down here on the side of the bed. So next door to this, you have got access to the garage just here. Uh, but this little thing here, I don't know if you better see what it says on it, uh, but it does say ultra store. So you have got the option of using the uh, boiler on mains as well. So if you didn't want to use your gas to get the water hot, you can use the mains. So let's just say you've got the mains cable plugged in. You can use by pressing up or down, and that'll give you two amounts of power that it uses from the electric hookup. And that'll essentially just get your water hot inside the boiler. Same amount of time really. So sort of, you know, you're talking about half an hour to an hour uh, before you get any hot water. But that's how you use the boiler on the mains. So, um, yeah, but you know, essentially, what, what I was trying to say about the about the mains stuff there and how much you can use, because this particular vehicle has a lot of things that you can use on the mains. Uh, you just you just have to be a little bit more cautious about it. Some vehicles, like some German vehicles, will literally have just everything apart from the fridge. Everything will just use gas to work you know you have a gas burner gas heater gas boiler uh and so you don't have to worry about it then but because this particular vehicle has the option of electric on pretty much everything you just have to be a little bit more cautious on what you're using at the same time as something else um especially if you're going to be using the two for two thousand watts up there that's that's the big one really eight amps for that one so as i say i mean if you're plugged into a, a, a six amp pole you, you know you can't even you can't use it you can't use a 2000 at all so just bear that in mind it should be on your habitation sheet as well and we normally write down the amount of amps that each thing pulls so you can have a little glance over that if you want to as well but there you go right so i think i've covered everything if i haven't or if there's anything you want going over again just let us know but otherwise look forward to seeing you soon thanks very much